I went for a walk in the woods during my holiday last summer. My original plan for the day fell through, so I thought, why not go for a little adventure outside? Now the area I was staying in wasn't famous for its beauty or anything. It was just a basic forest, lots of trees everywhere. I was wandering around mostly because I didn't have anything else lined up for the day. As I walked, I noticed there were lots of small trails splitting from the main path. It was weird. They looked like they had been used a few times, maybe by folks looking for a quick way through. But there was this one path that looked really different. It went in a totally opposite direction, and for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why someone would choose that route. The trees were thick, and I couldn't see very far, but something about that path made me want to see where it led, thinking it might lead to something interesting, like a pond or a clearing. I decided to give it a go. I had nothing to lose, right? The path seemed to go on longer than I thought it would. I walked and walked, almost about to turn back when the path ended. Just trees and grass in front of me. But then, just a little further, hidden among the trees, I spotted an old wooden cabin. It looked ancient, with moss all over it, and the roof seemed to sag a little as if it might fall any minute. The entrance had no door, but it was so dark inside, almost like the trees were keeping it in shadow on purpose. I hesitated, but then stepped closer, peering into the dark. From what little light entered, I could see there were broken bits of furniture and wood scattered everywhere. Curiosity got me again. I took out my phone, switched on the flashlight, and started to look around more. It was just two rooms, both looking like they'd been abandoned for ages. But then I saw another door. It was slightly open and led to some steps going down. A basement. Now it really felt like something out of a scary movie. But there was nothing to suggest anything bad. The place was empty after all. Gathering courage, I went down. The first thing I noticed was the strange smell. Musty, like a lot of animals had made this place their home. Shining my light around, I spotted another door at the end of the room. Behind it, there seemed to be a tunnel. It was poorly built, with parts of it falling apart. Beyond my light's reach, it was just pitch black. I began to feel uneasy. Maybe it was the silence or the darkness, but something told me to get out. Just as I was about to head back up, my phone's light flashed across the room and caught two eyes staring back at me from a dark corner. Panic hit me like a truck. Without thinking, I bolted up the stairs, nearly tripping over in my hurry. I didn't stop until I reached the main path, and from there, ran straight to my car. I drove away as fast as I could, my heart racing. I don't know who or what I saw in that basement, but the memory of those glowing eyes in the dark continues to haunt my dreams. Last year, I stayed in a little wooden house that's been in my family for a really long time. It was a cute tiny house with only two rooms, hidden deep in the woods, far away from the city. My family often goes there when they want a break from their daily lives maybe for a short holiday or just a weekend break. To be honest, I never really wanted to go there before. Why? Well, there was no running tap water inside the house. If you needed water, you'd have to use this old hand pump outside. And guess what? The bathroom wasn't inside the house. It was a little shed outside in the garden, which we all called the outhouse. But one day, I felt like I needed a break from everything, and I wanted to go somewhere peaceful. The problem was, I was low on cash and couldn't afford to rent a fancy place. So I thought, why not give this old family house a try? When I reached the place, I was kind of amazed. I knew it was going to be in a remote location, but this was like a completely different world. It felt like no one else was around for miles and miles. I parked my car next to the house and started up a machine that gives us electricity. It's called a generator. After that. I unlocked the door using the old key that's been passed down in the family. Once inside it was cozy. I mean, considering I didn't pay a penny, it was pretty neat. I settled in, arranging my stuff here and there. I made sure everything was okay in the house. Later, I boiled some water, made myself a cup of tea, and sat down near the warm fireplace. I opened my laptop to do some work. Of course there was no phone signal or Wi-Fi out here but I had some offline tasks I could do. Time really flew by. 
Before I knew it, it was dark outside. I decided it was bedtime, so I started packing up my things. But before going to bed, I had to turn off the generator. I didn't want to use up all the fuel. As I stepped outside, I noticed something strange. In the distance, among the dense trees, there was a light. It was strange because this was the only light I could see around the house, and it was moving. I just stood there, staring, as the light moved around and finally faded away in the distance. I hung around outside for a bit longer, just to be sure that the weird light had actually disappeared. Then I went back into the little wooden house. Being in this super remote place, away from towns or cities, it felt pretty scary thinking someone, or something, might be nearby. I decided to turn off the fireplace and used a simple battery light to find my way to the sleeping room. I hopped into bed and quickly fell into a deep sleep. The next day, I woke up as the sun was just starting to light up the sky. I made some hot coffee and just stayed inside the house until it was almost noon. Then, I thought I'd take a little stroll outside. I was still curious about that mysterious light from the previous night, so I headed in the direction where I had seen it. After walking for about 20 minutes, I reached the spot, or at least I thought I did, but I didn't find any trails or footpaths, and there was no sign that anyone had been there at all. A bit puzzled, I headed back to the house and just continued with my day, doing pretty much the same stuff as the day before. Night came around again, and before going to sleep, I checked on the generator. And guess what? I saw that strange light again. This time, though, it wasn't moving. It was just there, glowing steadily in the distance. I stared at it for a short while, but it didn't change, so I went back inside. Soon, I was sound asleep. But in the middle of the night, something woke me up. I felt the urgent need to use the bathroom. I tried to ignore it, hoping I'd fall back to sleep. But after a while, I knew I had to go. Wearing my clothes and shoes and carrying my battery lamp, I went out to the little outhouse. After I was done, as I was walking back, something caught my attention. There were footprints on the ground, and they weren't mine. I bent down to look closer. These footprints went all around the house, and then, they headed off in a certain direction. I followed them with my eyes, and realized they were pointing straight towards the spot where I'd seen the light. But now, there was no light. A wave of fear washed over me. Without wasting any time, I raced back to the house, grabbed my things, jumped in my car, and sped away. I didn't even dare to look behind. I still think about that night and wonder what really happened, but deep down, I'm not sure if I ever want to find out. I was staying in a rented house for just one night during my road trip last year. The house was a small wooden one in the woods, right in the middle of my journey. It was perfect, because I only needed to rest for one night, and then continue my trip the next day. After a long drive, I reached there just as the sun was about to set. I followed a bumpy path made of small stones for a bit, until I saw the house. It looked much older than I thought it would, and there was a muddy track leading up to the front door because it had rained earlier. Dragging my bags inside, I noticed how dark the place was. There were not many windows, and even though it was still a bit bright outside, the inside was quite dim. I found a switch and turned on a light in a corner, but that was the only light that seemed to work in the entire house. Feeling a bit annoyed, I texted the person I had rented from asking if there were other switches I might have missed. I wasn't thrilled about the situation, but it was just one night. I thought, I'll manage. I settled in the bedroom keeping my bags and belongings there. I then moved to the living room and sat on an old but comfy couch. Even if the place had old decorations, it still felt kind of nice. While checking my phone and looking at the route for the next day, I was startled by a very loud knock on the door. It was so loud that I felt more annoyed than curious about who could be there. Since there was no way to see who was outside, I just went and opened the door. Outside stood a guy wrapped up in thick winter clothes and grinning widely. I found it odd because it was a bit chilly, but definitely not cold enough for such heavy clothing. He introduced himself as the owner of the house and said he was there to fix the lights. I found it strange that he'd come so suddenly without informing, but I thought, well, he's here now, and allowed him in. He moved straight to one of the lamps and started examining it, but something caught my attention. Looking out, I couldn't see any car in the driveway or nearby. 
It was a secluded place. He couldn't have just walked here, especially not so soon after my text. I turned to ask him about it, but he was already staring at me. We shared an awkward silence. He then simply smiled and said he couldn't fix the light. I replied that it was okay and I'd be heading to bed soon. I then opened the door, hinting for him to leave. He walked out slowly, not uttering a word. The situation felt odd, and I wanted to figure out where he had come from, so I kept my eyes on him as he left. He kept walking down the stony path that led from the house, and for a moment, it seemed like he was just going to walk on forever. But then, he suddenly stopped and turned back. I peeked from behind a curtain, trying to stay hidden, while watching him. The guy just stood there, gazing at the house for what felt like a long time. After what seemed like forever, he moved again. But this time, he walked off the path and into the woods nearby. This was all becoming too strange. Why would the supposed owner just walk into the woods like that? And with the way he was dressed, it was as if he lived outdoors. This gave me an uneasy feeling in my stomach. I spent the next little while sitting on the couch, checking my phone and occasionally glancing outside, just to be sure. I was almost convincing myself that maybe it was time to sleep when a very loud knock echoed through the house. My heart raced, thinking it had to be him. But why would he knock again? It was pitch black outside. Who could be there? The knocking continued, forceful and loud. I decided to stay silent and not make a move. Then, the sound of footsteps reached my ears. They were moving, coming around to the side of the house. I tiptoed to the bedroom, and from there I tried to see who was outside using my phone's light. I heard them stop right near the window. I held my breath, shining my phone towards the window, waiting for any sign of movement. After a long pause, the footsteps started again, but this time they were moving away. I waited and listened until I couldn't hear them anymore. Then, without wasting any more time, I grabbed my things, rushed to my car, and drove away as fast as I could. I found a gas station about six miles from there and called the cops. They got in touch with the actual owner of the house, and it turned out the man I'd seen wasn't him at all. No one knew who he was or why he was at the house, and that scared me even more. The next morning, after giving all the details to the police, I hit the road again, but one question kept nagging at me. How did that stranger know about the lights not working? Could he have been in the house before I arrived? Or was he somehow working with the actual owner? I don't have the answers, but one thing's for sure. I was lucky to get out of there when I did.